It might surprise you to know this, but sometimes even the mighty critical drinker gets it wrong. Like with Prey, or Suicide Squad, or Dungeons and Dragons, all of which turned out to be a lot better than I predicted from the trailers. But then there's movies like Indiana Jones and the Dial Tone of Density, which proved to be exactly the kind of dumb, bloated, creatively bankrupt, nightmarish disasters I always said they'd be. Sometimes it really does suck to be right. Sitting through all two and a half hours of this utter garbage was one of the most tedious, frustrating and depressing experiences I've ever had in a cinema. And I'm from Scotland. Put simply, Indiana Jones and the dial-up internet of depravity is an absolute embarrassment of a movie that shames not just the franchise, not just the genre, but the entire concept of filmmaking. It is a complete and utter waste of money and talent made by a shambling wreck of a studio that's basically the Hollywood equivalent of a junkie rifling through his trashed apartment in the hopes of finding one last forgotten stash. It is everything we predicted it would be and much, much worse. So grab your battered fedora and arthritis meds because we're going in one last time. Now believe it or not, the first 15 minutes of Dialysis of Dysentery are actually pretty good. The action kicks off in World War II where a digitally de-aged indie is working behind enemy lines to recover the Spear of Destiny before it can get shipped back to Berlin. The spear turns out to be a fake in this case, but what isn't a fake is a piece of an ancient artifact known as the Dial of Destiny, built by Archimedes a couple of thousand years ago. A device rumoured to allow the user to travel through time itself. After a bit of fisticuffs, Indy ends up recovering half of the dial from a German scientist named Voller before heading back to America. The whole sequence is fun, action-packed, and the CGI on Harrison Ford is mostly pretty good. Yeah, his face is slightly rubbery at times and it's pretty obvious they set the whole thing at night to keep him in shadow as much as possible, but for the most part it kind of felt like an indie movie. And that's where the good stuff ends, my friends. Flash forward to 1969 and Indy is now a broken, depressed old man living alone in a crummy New York apartment, divorced from Marion, about to retire from his job and with nothing left to live for. No way! Fuck me, Lucasfilm, you're really scaling new heights of imagination when it comes to legacy male characters, aren't you? All we need now is for some plucky young female character to come into his life and show him the way. Called it. This right here is Helena, yet another addition to the growing lineup of brunette, British, flawless, idealised Kathleen Kennedy self inserts that are better than their ageing male counterparts in every possible way. Jesus Christ, and they talk about the male ego. Anyway, Helena's on the trail of the dial and she wants Indy's help tracking it down. Luckily for her, it just so happens to be in the storeroom of Indy's university, but no sooner have they retrieved it than they get ambushed by Voller, who's now a scientist working for NASA. And Oh no, Helena bails out and leaves Indy to fend for himself. See, it turns out that all she really wanted to do was take the dial for herself so that she could auction it off for massive profits. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> Luckily though, Salah shows up and tells Indy that the auction is going to take place in a hotel in Tangiers so that the rest of the plot can happen. Wow, it's lucky that this hotel happens to be the only place on earth where stolen antiques get bought and sold, and even more lucky that Indy's best friend just so happens to know about it. Shite. So he goes to Tangiers and Voller shows up too so that the rest of the plot can happen and there's more fighting and a car chase that goes on about 15 minutes longer than it needs to and eventually Indy and Helena team up and head to Greece to recover a tablet thing from a shipwreck that's going to show them the location of the other half of the dial. Why does all this feel like the plot for Rise of Skywalker all over again? Anyway, Voller shows up again to ambush them. How? Don't know. He just kind of teleports in whenever it's convenient for the plot, I guess. Bullshit. Anyway, there's more fighting and Indy and Helena escape with the tablet and head to Sicily to recover the second piece of the dial. And yet again, Voller and his men show up to intercept them. How? Well, hold on tight because this just about made my brain explode in the movie theatre. It's because he grabbed a pair of binoculars and watched them escape the boat ambush and because they weren't heading in the direction they claimed to be, he magically knew exactly what they were planning and where to find them. Seriously, 
Fuck off, film. Anyway, so they finally get the second piece of the dial, and of course Voller teleports in to intercept them, and oh no, Indy gets shot, and I guess he's dying now, but the movie never seems to be entirely clear about that. Like, at some points he seems to be at death's door, but then at others he's able to fight and move like he's at full health, so your guess is as good as mine. I mean, given how many times this movie was rewritten and reshot, I'd be willing to bet that the fucking filmmakers didn't even know for sure. Anyway, let's see if we can finish this shit sandwich. So Voller's plan is to use the dial to go back to 1939 and change the course of the war so that Germany wins, but unfortunately it takes them all back 2000 years to the time of Archimedes in the middle of a huge battle with the Roman army. So there's yet more fighting and the plane crashes and Indy and Helena survive and he asks to stay in the past so that he can die there. But then Helena says nah, it'll be fine and knocks him out and takes him back to 1969 against his will and then Marion shows up in a scene that feels about as natural and tonally consistent as Pennywise the Clown in an episode of Sesame Street, and then the movie just kind of stops, like it can't think of anything else to do, so it basically just shuffles off the stage. And that's it, that's the plot for Dialect of Dundee. <laughs> What a fucking incomprehensible calamity of a film this is. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I went into it expecting great things, but Jesus fuck mother in Christ, this was worse than anything I could have imagined. For a start, it's sluggish and horribly paced, running at least 30 minutes too long and built around a protracted fetch quest where you're never entirely sure what the characters are trying to do or why, and after a while you pretty much stop caring. Fight scenes are weirdly sluggish, clumsy and badly edited, there's no sense of energy or excitement to any of it, and there's multiple vehicle chases that drag on for like 15 minutes each. The first three indie movies delivered brilliantly crafted, inventive and impactful action scenes that knew just when to pull back and give the audience a break, but this one never does. Combined with sloppy CGI, they're more of a chore to get through than an exciting change of pace. And you can absolutely tell that this movie was butchered in the editing bay, reshot and recut multiple times in a desperate attempt to make it work. The result is a hodgepodge of different ideas, plot lines and aborted character arcs that just kind of meander along with no real sense of progression or development. And as for the ending, it's like they ran out of time and ideas altogether and just had to go with whatever they could cobble together. There's no sense of dramatic payoff here, of carefully developed character arcs getting drawn together into a final fitting conclusion, it's just a rushed and nonsensical, everyone's happy now so deal with it kind of ending. It's no better on the character front either, the antagonists are incompetent and comically useless, and the only reason they keep getting the drop on Indy is because he's equally stupid, and because they can teleport in anywhere they want so that the plot can happen. Voller is a complete non-entity who never comes across as even remotely threatening or interesting. I mean, Maz Mikkelsen is a great actor, but any actor is only as good as the script they have to work with, and I've sharted out better things than this script. Teddy was clearly intended to be a replacement for short rounds. Well, if you stripped away all of his personality, charm and likability, he's there as a kind of sidekick to Helena who can do whatever the plot needs him to, including flying a plane. And I'm not kidding, there's literally a conversation where Helena asks him if he knows how to fly a Cessna, and he replies that he's never flown one before, and then she replies that he's never flown any plane before. <laughs> Why the fuck did you even ask him then, you absolute Cornish pasty? Jesus, did anyone even read this script before they performed it? But by far the worst offenders are the two leads. I actually had second-hand embarrassment for Harrison Ford, watching him labouring away on screen in a movie that clearly resented his very presence. Make no mistake, this is not the Indiana Jones that any of us remember. This absolute imposter is timid, gullible, naive, sad, depressed, weak, cowardly, clueless and incompetent. I am fucking sick to death of these absolute brainlets posing as writers whose only possible outcome to getting older is turning into a depressed, lonely failure who's given up on life. How is it possible for a studio to hate the very characters that allow them to exist in the first place? And this being a Disney Lucasfilm movie, there's obviously an obligatory strong female character shoehorned into the story, trying desperately to leech off the popularity of the legacy character they're supposed to replace. 
And of course, she's smarter and stronger and more resourceful than him. Of course, she wins every argument and gets proven right about everything and saves the day multiple times. Because what else could she possibly be in a modern Disney movie? The problem, though, is that the script has no idea what to do with her or what kind of person it really wants her to be. Is she a cold and callous mercenary? A compassionate and loyal friend? A seductive femme fatale? A lovable con artist trying to scrape by? A quirky joker? The movie doesn't know so it tries to make her a bit of everything, with no real overarching trajectory or motivation, and the results are as meandering and pointless as the rest of the movie. It doesn't really help that Phoebe Waller-Bridge doesn't have the acting range or the qualities needed to play a character like this. She's not charismatic enough to be an adventurer, she's not charming enough to be a rogue, she's not attractive enough to be a femme fatale, and she's not funny enough to be comic relief. She throws punches with all the finesse and expertise of Boogie in his first boxing match, and she runs like a retarded giraffe, all gangly uncoordinated limbs and awkward flat-footed strides. The only time she actually seems at home in the role is when she's pretending to be an earnest, geeky bookworm to con Indy into helping her. And honestly, you probably could have done something with a character like that if you were willing to give her a proper arc. Ultimately, by the time this movie finally ended, my only real thought was, well, that's it then, that's it over. Not just the film, not just the character of Indiana Jones, but in a bigger sense, the very legacy of George Lucas himself. This was it. This was the last property left for them to destroy, and destroy it they did. The cupboards are bare now, they've consumed literally everything that was built up by their predecessors, and now there's nowhere left for them to hide. There's no excuses left to make. This movie is absolutely going to crash and burn, and it deserves to, because maybe then it'll finally force them to accept the truth. They are not creators. They are not capable of making great things like their predecessors did. They're not even capable of making mediocre things. They are destroyers, not creators. And when you run out of things to destroy, well, eventually you'll be next. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now!